Thank you so much for joining me uh, on one of my very first YouTube videos. Um, we are walking through, as I mentioned on my blog post, we're walking through a coding challenge uh, in my office where we're able to kind of try out new technologies, learn and kind of en enhance ourselves and also promote collaboration within the team. Um, our first challenge is done, so I want to just highlight what I built and how it works and uh, hope, hope this benefits somebody else. Uh, first, we have the requirements. So this is on my blog at uh, davidlosey.com. You'll see challenge one and oops, too far down, the requirements here. Uh, so it's our first challenge is a calculator, super simple. We just need to do basic math. Uh, we wanted to keep it simple for the first challenge or two because for those of us learning something new, we didn't want to have to learn all the language and everything and then try to build something more complex. So um, I found that as, as I was working through this, I was spending a lot of time on Google, right? What's Java syntax for equaling strings or comparing strings, things like that. Um, which I know from JavaScript, I even know in C Sharp or Python, but in Java it's slightly different. So um, I'm glad this was an easy challenge uh, because I spent a lot of time just learning the ins and outs of Java. Um, so, so this calculator um, just needs to do math. We just need to be able to kind of two plus two and expect the answer to be four. And if we minus three, it should be one. Um, since I'm making an endpoint, um, I'm not building a UI with this. This is just an endpoint. I'll be using Postman to illustrate it working. That's my quote UI. Um, but we do want to kind of consider sending basic instructions to the user um, and of, as to what type of calculations are supported or what have you. So it's just a it's just a consideration. I didn't build any help files in here, and I'll cover that in a little bit. Um, but I do uh, complete all the acceptance criteria, and I'm very happy to share that this story would pass QA. <laughs> um, first acceptance criteria is accept a number and an operator and another number and provide the answer. So just support equations, right? Support doing math. Um, next, uh, next criteria is allow the user to continue to perform calculations on the previous answer. Um, so if I do 2 plus 2 and send it, it gives me 4. I should just say divide by 2 or add 6 or whatever it is, right? And allow the user to continue to append to the previous calculation. And then, um, of course, if you're doing number 2, you, number 3 needs to work because you need to be able to clear the current calculation to start over, right? Uh, you don't want them to be stuck with that forever. And then we threw a couple extra credit items in here, uh, support grouping with parentheses. This was super easy. And then if you were, especially with the UI folk, but I guess this would be possible, maybe illustrate the math on an abacus, right? Um, I threw abacus in there because I think those are, that's a fun word to say. And it's a prehistoric, not prehistoric, a very retro old math device. Um, and I think we would have had to learn how it works to be effectively be able to illustrate it. So I thought that'd be some just some fun extra credit in there. I did not do anything with an abacus in mind. Um, so real quick, let's run through how it works and what what's working. So I'm running it on my local server, um, and I have the route of calculate. And when I hit send, we get back an empty answer object, which is nothing because I didn't tell it what to calculate. So we're going to send in a calculation parameter. And I'm just going to do two plus two, pretty basic. We should get four back, but we don't get four back because the plus needs to be encoded. This was kind of a pain. Um, so we come in, in here and we just encode this like so. Um, and now we get back the answer four. Um, if that's alarming or concerning, that's okay. This is standard URL traffic. Um, your UI would handle the encoding. So the user would type in two plus two and it, your UI would have to encode it your front end encodes it and then sends it to the API appropriately. The user would never see percent %2b. That'd be silly. Um, but this is not a UI, this is just Postman. So the math worked. Um, and I can continue to expand upon this and I could hit O times four and send that and we get 10, right? Now math does the multiplication and division first. That's two times four is eight plus two is 10. Now if I wanted to do the two plus two first in good math isms, uh, we wrap that with parentheses. So I can go like that. And so I should do 2 plus 2 first, which is 4, times 4, which should be 16. And there it is. Uh, you also notice that the plus comes back with the right character. So it's the API is recognizing the values correctly. So that's the first acceptance criteria of just kind of making it work. Um, this is also the first extra credit one is supporting the parentheses. Now, if we wanted to continue the math, right? So for example, I have 16 here and now I want to do something with the 16. I could certainly continue to build this out, but I have an ID, so I can send the ID back to it, ID three, and then I can do whatever I want, 
and it's going to take the value of 16 and continue the calculations. So I would think 16 and then uh, maybe times 5. Send, and you see that we did 16 times 5, and the answer is now 80. And I can continue that. I can hit bump 4 and say divide that by 10 uh, minus 5, open parenthesis, 8 divided by 2 minus 6, close parenthesis. So we can have some fun with that. Hit send, and we'll get an error. I don't know which one needs to be encoded. So we'll go ahead and just encode it all, and we'll learn together. Oh, slashes. Silly me. Actually, I think I'm dividing it the wrong way. Yep, dividing it the wrong way. Division is that way, isn't it? I should have probably checked this before the video, but that's okay. Boom, bad request. I swear I did division before. Let me see. Maybe it's the first symbol that's confusing it. And boom. All right, let's get rid of the division completely. Send. Oh, it's silly me, it's the five with the parenthesis. So division should work there. Um, let's say percent to be. Hey, there we go. So as you can see, error handling is working for the most part, right? It didn't blow up on, on us or anything. It just told us it's a bad, it's a bad request. And come to find out, I fat fingered something. Um, so now we have 63 and we can continue on like that. Um, let me just do one more because I think it's fun. Just want to divide that by nine. Let's see if that works. Boom, seven. Hey, hey. So pretty rudimentary, uh, pretty basic. And if you don't send any parameters at all, what I have it doing now is sending the history. So you could look at all the previous requests you've had. So this allows you to kind of get the history out of it. Now let's dive into code real quick. And here is my primary controller, my only controller in this app right now. And um, you'll see that we're accepting calculation and ID. And then if calculation is not blank, we do a bunch of stuff. Um, if it is blank, that's when we return the entire history. We're getting that from, from a JSON file. But uh, let's follow happy path. So I receive a calculation. Um, and then I check if there's an ID. So if there's no ID. This is a new request. So let's skip that for a moment. And then we calculate it. So this, this was interesting. My first time in Java, and I was expecting Java to be a wee bit more, um, I don't know, cooler maybe. The I actually had to bring in a JavaScript engine to then do the calculations in Java. Uh, wasn't expecting that. It is super simple, as you can see here. It's, it's very small, but I was just surprised by that. That took some Googling to figure out. Um, there are other ways of doing it, um, but this was the, the shortest, easiest way. So this, this works really well um, in the con converting this in, into a double object. And that gets me my answer. Um, I'm using uh, counter, which is an atomic long. I think I stole this from, or I saw this, sorry, in someone else's blog post, so I just thought this was great. This just gets me a number and goes, um, nothing fancy. If this was, of course, production worthy or handling multiple users, all that stuff, obviously you'd build the right ID system, the right unique ID system. But for the sake of this example, I just needed a quick ID. Uh, we create a new answer object. We give it the ID, uh, the answer, and what the calculation, the full calculation is. And that answer object is a basic class that just has those three parameters. Um, and then I have this JSON utility. So I needed to store persistent data, right? I needed the ability for a user to come back with a previous request and add on to it. Um, not knowing Java, um, I reached out to some colleagues and everyone's recommending go to AWS, DynamoDB, all that stuff, which is great. And maybe I'll do that later. But for the sake of the example, I didn't want to learn AWS. I just wanted to focus on Java. So I wrote a little utility here um, using Jackson. That's what it's called, right? Yeah, Jackson, to read and write a JSON file. Um, so when we set string, we give it a key and value, and we have an, an array of history items, and we append it to that array, and then we write it to the file. And the file is right here. So this is, this is my history object. Um, I created a generic object called history. Where is it? Oh, sorry, wrong file. Um, called history, which is just a lightweight object of key, key values. Um, 
And now that I say it out loud, I think I could have used a hash table maybe instead. I don't know. I'll explore that. Um, and then the get string is the opposite of setting. So, so we get it. I do set the default value to zero um, because I know I'm just dealing with numbers. I can get away with that. But the, we try to get the string if it exists or not. It returns the value. And then the get all reads that JSON file and just lists them all. And I just append a string here. Um, ideally, that could, should probably have been an array object that would have been returned uh, instead of a string. But I'll get into that headache in a moment that I had there. Um, so now we have this answer object. Um, we, we write the answer to that JSON file, and then we return the answer with the HTTP status. OK, and that's happy path. Um, if you provide an ID on, on the request, you would. this is when we get the ID. So that JSON utility, we then call get string. We look for the existing ID, and we append the value to the beginning of the new calculation the user has, has provided. Um, if any, and so uh, super basic, um, I learned enough to get this thing running, which was great. Um, my One of my pain points right now is around error handling, or yeah, I guess error handling through the API. I, I totally understand try catch, it's, that's not the part of error handling, it's the returning it back to the consumer that, they, that an error occurred. So what I'm doing here is uh, if a script error happens, which is the script engine that's using that JavaScript's using for the calculation. Um, if that happens, I create a new answer object with the error message in it. Make sure to provide your equation, and then I return that with a bad request status. So at least you know it's a 500 or something like that, 400 or 500. Um, but I don't like that because I'm not returning an answer, but I am returning an answer here. But I shouldn't be. I should be returning a different data type object, um, and so. I started exploring options there. I, I, I have a link in my blog, to, in this blog post of some of the sites I looked at. Um, I just found it incredibly difficult. Like this just wasn't working. Um, I looked at other APIs that my teams have made um, and they're doing it and I can't seem to reverse engineer it correctly. So um, my next challenge, this next week challenge, um, I believe I'm going to need to support multiple data types being returned or the way I want to design it. So I need to figure that out. And if I do figure that out, I'll come back to this and fix this and do this correctly. Um, if you know how to do it, or if you can point me to how to do it, please um, let me know. You can go back to my blog. There's a link to Twitter, tweet me, or leave a comment on my blog post with a link. And I will gladly take a look at that. Um, I, I know I'm going to have to figure this out because I can't have everything returned under one answer. Uh, and that's basically it as i mentioned it's pretty lightweight um so this this code is, is up on github feel free to pull it down play with it i'm always looking for improvements and critiques um and until next challenge uh i will talk to you then thank you